You're walking down the street, minding your own business, when someone gives you a look. Just a glance, but something about it sticks. Was it disgust? Fear. And you wonder what's going on behind those eyes. Ever had that? I was thinking about these moments, those split-second reactions that make us question everything, when I stumbled on this book. The Art of Reading Minds. Sounded like a gimmick at first, like one of those self-help books gathering dust on the shelf of a pseudo-intellectual. But the more I dug into it, the more I realized that this was about something real. Real in the sense that human behavior is a book waiting to be read if you have the right tools. And no, you're not going to start pulling thoughts out of someone's head like some magician at a Las Vegas show. But you might just get damn close. Buckle up, because we're about to dive into the world of mentalism, where psychology, observation, and persuasion collide in a way that could freak out even the most skeptical among you. So what is mentalism? Forget about those dudes in capes guessing your number or bending spoons with their minds. Real mentalism, the kind you can use in everyday life, is all about observing people, reading cues, and getting inside their heads without them knowing it. This is psychological warfare dressed in casual conversation. And the best part, you don't need to be some savant to pull it off. It's about using subtle techniques, like mirroring someone's posture, pacing your speech with theirs, to build rapport. You start aligning yourself with their subconscious, making them feel like, hey, this person just gets me. Simple but effective. And when you master that, people open up. They let you into their minds, even without realizing it. It's the key to influence, persuasion, and dare I say, manipulation. But we'll get to that. Ever notice how, when someone crosses their arms, you do it too? Or how you unconsciously match someone's vibe during a conversation, whether it's fast-paced or slow and deliberate? That's the magic of pacing and mirroring in action. And here's the kicker. It's not just a social reflex. It's a way to get people to trust you, to see you as one of them. If you can mirror someone's body language, and subtly match their pace of speech or even their breathing, you're speaking to their brain on a primal level. We're wired to feel comfortable with those who act like us. It's in your DNA. Once you have that rapport, you can guide them, influence their thoughts, even plan ideas without them realizing it. It's the mentalist's ultimate power move, and it's the kind of subtlety that gets under your skin without raising any alarms. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Body language isn't some universal code you can learn in a weekend seminar. It's personal. Every person has their own unique set of movements and expressions. And if you want to get into their head, you've got to learn their language. So next time you're talking to someone, don't just watch what they do. Pay attention to how they do it. Is their smile forced or genuine? Are their gestures sharp or fluid? Over time, you'll start noticing patterns, and before long, you'll be able to predict their reactions like a mind reader. You won't just hear what they say, you'll know what they mean. You start to get why they act the way they do. It's like putting together a puzzle, one where the pieces move. Mentalists don't just watch body language, they use it to influence others. This is where it gets fun. Let's say someone is feeling down, slumped over in their chair, looking defeated. You sit down and mirror their posture, subtly so they don't notice. Then slowly you start changing your posture. You sit up a little straighter, lift your chin, maybe smile just a little. 
And guess what? They'll start doing the same. It's like steering a ship by barely touching the wheel. You can lift their mood, change their energy without saying a word. This is mind control, folks, but it's not about power. It's about connection. It's about leading someone to feel better, to trust you, to believe in what you're saying because they feel good when they're around you. But let's not forget the real moneymaker, facial expressions. This is where the book goes full throttle. You've got 40 muscles in your face, many of which you can't even consciously control. And yet, those muscles are the key to reading someone's emotions before they even realize they're feeling them. The seven universally recognized emotions, surprise, anger, sadness, joy, fear, disgust, and contempt, are all right there on display. You just need to know how to spot them. Take surprise, eyebrows up, mouth open. Or anger, brows down, jaw tight. These are split-second cues, micro-expressions, that flash across the face before the mind catches up. Catch those, and you'll know what someone's feeling before they do. And here's where things get really interesting. Micro-expressions. These fleeting, involuntary facial movements betray emotions that people are trying to hide or might not even be aware of. Imagine catching a half-second flash of sadness in someone who's smiling at you, or a twitch of disgust in someone trying to act polite. It's subtle, but once you know what to look for, it's like seeing in a new dimension. You'll start catching those tiny tells everywhere, on a date, in a business meeting, even in your closest relationships. And when you do, it's like you've unlocked the secret level of human interaction. You know what's going on beneath the surface, even if they don't. Let's talk about lies. We all lie, it's part of being human. But most people suck at hiding it. They think they can control their faces, but their bodies give them away. That's where mentalists come in. They're experts at spotting leakage, those unconscious movements that reveal when someone's words and emotions are out of sync. And the eyes? Oh man, the eyes are a gold mine. Liars tend to blink longer or look in strange directions as they scramble to keep their story straight. Catch someone doing that and you'll know something's off. But it's not just about catching liars. It's about understanding when someone is under pressure, when they're stressed, or when they're holding back the truth. Then there's gestural slips. Ever seen someone shred a napkin into little pieces while pretending everything's fine? Or how about that constant pen clicking during a tense meeting? Those repetitive actions are a dead giveaway. It's the body's way of dealing with stress, anxiety, or, more often than not, deception. Gestural slips are like an alarm bell ringing in the background, subtle but relentless. When you see someone fidgeting, repeating movements, or using filler words like uh or um more than usual, it's a sign they're either lying or holding back. And once you learn to spot that, you'll never look at conversations the same way again. Pay attention to speech patterns too. Lying doesn't just show up in what people say, but in how they say it. Long pauses where there shouldn't be, stretching out words to buy time. These are all signs that someone's brain is working overtime to keep their story straight. And then there's repetition. When someone keeps saying the same thing over and over, it's like they're trying to convince themselves, not just you. It's subtle, but once you train yourself to hear it, you'll know when the truth is being stretched thin.
But here's the real mind bender. Suggestion. Mentalists are pros at planting ideas in your head without you even realizing it. One classic trick is to use negation. Ever heard someone say, don't think of a pink elephant? What's the first thing you imagine? Exactly. By telling you not to think of something, your brain goes straight to it. That's the power of suggestion. You can use it in conversation to steer someone's thoughts, to make them think it was their idea all along. It's subtle, but it's everywhere, from marketing to politics, even in personal relationships. And let's not forget anchoring. Ever had someone touch your arm when they said something positive, like that was a great idea? That's anchoring. They're linking a physical action with an emotional response. Do it enough times and they can trigger that response just by touching you. This isn't some mystical power, it's basic psychology. And the best part, you can use it on yourself Create anchors for confidence, calm, or energy. Need to psych yourself up before a big meeting? Trigger your anchor. It's like having an emotional cheat code. Now, before you go out there and start using these tricks to turn people into puppets, remember, there's an ethical line here. This isn't about manipulation for manipulation's sake. It's about understanding, connection, and influence for mutual benefit. If you're gonna use mentalism, use it with respect. The goal isn't to control people, it's to connect with them on a deeper level, to understand their emotions and help guide them in a positive direction. The world needs more empathy, not more manipulation. So what's the takeaway here? You don't need to be a magician or a psychic to read minds. All you need is to pay attention. Watch people. Listen to them. Look for those little tells, those micro expressions, those subconscious gestures that reveal what's really going on inside. With practice, you'll get better at reading people, understanding them, and yes, influencing them. But always remember, it's not about tricks, it's about building real connections. Use these tools wisely, and you'll not only understand people better, but you'll be able to help them, guide them, and maybe even make their lives a little better in the process. Thanks for sticking around and letting me take you through this wild ride of the human mind. If you've got any thoughts, or if you think you can catch me using these tricks, drop a comment below. Hit that like button if you learned something, and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the fascinating world of human behavior. See you next time.